So I'm going to share you a bit about my background, and partly this because there's a lot of people, when they talk about their health, you might have done this yourself. Have you ever, you know, had that thought or shared it with somebody? Oh, it's just my genes. You know, I've just got these genes, and because I've got these genes, this is how I am. Well, this is to answer that question because here's my genes. My granddad, as I said, he was a baker. He made his original money mining gold in the Yukon. It's a fascinating story, and uh, came back and married his childhood sweetheart. And but you know, created the town bakery, bought the town bakery, and that was his business for many years. And um, and my mum, you know, that's that was her at twelve. And you know, we were a chubby family. I started to get chubby myself when I was nine years old, or maybe even eight. I remember having my tonsils and adenoids out. Before that, I was apparently always skinny. And after that, I just really fattened up, much to my mother's pleasure. But um, it was not to my pleasure. You know, I've been dieting since I was like 14 years old and conscious of the fact I was one of the few chubby people in my class, you know, back in the, in the when would that have been? It would have been the late 60s, early 70s. So here's my dad's side. So, so it's, you know, it's just not a one-sided thing. You know, my dad's dad was a builder and so was he. And, um, you know, that was my dad at 60, about the same age as I am now. And that was me as a, as a teenager in, in the back. I'm the one with the long hair in the back. Um, always wanted to look like, you know, my mate. Always wanted to have abs, but always had, you know, belly fat and chest fat. And so that was been a struggle with me for, um, for decades, basically. That really, if I'd known what I know now, it would not have had to be. So this has been my journey with food. That was, you know, a picture of me in New Guinea. I was, uh, did my medical elective in New Guinea. Uh, amazing time over there. And that was me working as a bush doctor. And, um, but I, you know, I did lots of fasting at that time. I put that photo up because that was probably the thinnest I'd been as a young adult. And I did do lots of fasting. And that's got some, some messages from what we'll share later on in, the, in this presentation. But 1976, I, I pretty much turned vegetarian, and uh, you know, from 1976 to 2010, uh, that's the way I was. You know, fat was actually demonised when I was in medical school. That was 73 to 78, and I was. I remember that when early on in medical school, a book called *Pure White and Deadly* came out, and we were shown that in our medical lectures, and that was by Professor John Yudkin, who really wanted to pin the blame on carbohydrate, and. It was really interesting for me, and, and you want to think about this in terms of how our beliefs change, is that was part of medical training uh, in like the 73, 74, 75 type time frame. But 76, 77, 78, that book was actually, think about this, that book was thrown in the dustbin, Professor Yudkin's career was wrecked, and the whole idea that fat was the bad guy made a massive push and was driven into our medical school education and in, indeed into the world's education about what was healthy to eat. So remember that it comes back to what we believe is healthy and who decides about that. And that I believe was one of the biggest mistakes of, um, of the modern day world. It was just totally wrong information. Now we know it's true. But uh, you know, so there I was a vegetarian in 1990 and I had a a real profound experience with some food supplements that paid me even more attention to healthy eating. I just couldn't deny how, the difference I felt in my mind and body. And at that point, I actually went wheat and dairy free. Uh, and I, I noticed you know, when I went dairy free first, uh, then I noticed I was starting to get. I wasn't because when you're intolerant to something, you'll often not know exactly how badly it is until you actually stop things. So when I stopped dairy, all of a sudden I noticed my guts were getting bloated when I ate wheat. But until I'd stopped dairy, I didn't really notice that. And so then I stopped wheat as well. And I was actually a wheat-free vegan for 10 years. I brought up my, my one of my daughters. She was in that phase where we were just starting that. And so she had the first 10 years of her life as a wheat-free vegan. So obviously I've, I've been intensely focused on health, thinking I was doing all the right things. But, and in 2004, that's what I looked like on, you know, on the bottom left there. But in 2005, I started to get overt signs of inflammation. I, I started to wake up with the gummy eyes. My eyes would be you know, gum shut with mucky stuff. and That's called blepharitis. And, um, and I'd seen that in old men in hospitals, but to experience it myself, that, well, that was curious happening, wasn't it? 
and then you can see that passport photo, the 2009. Uh, you know, I started developing rosacea. That was just you know one of the photos because I I didn't get many photos at that that stage in my life. Um, so I, I posted that one on the on the um, on the on the passport photo. But you can see the rosacea on my my face, and I had to, I ended up pinning it down to things like coffee, chocolate, alcohol, and those kind of things had to disappear massively in my life to reduce that. So they're all signs of inflammation, and some people call rosacea the first sign of metabolic syndrome, which you've probably heard more about. But then, in two th so they get you know wheat-free vegan, getting signs of inflammation, and then 2007 I get testicular cancer. Now I did have a massive financial loss, and if you look at uh, a process called German New Medicine, uh, sudden catastrophic losses are. Um, part of what brings on the actual testicular cancer. So, hey, could have been that. Could have been, I kept my cell phone on my left hip and it was my left testicle that got cancer. Um, so who knows? Or it could have been just all the inflammation in my body from the diet. And then in 2009, almost to like <laughs> to add insult to injury, you know, because I'm I hardly seen a doctor in my life and I'm at the GPs doing a follow up for my, you know, testicular cancer. And uh, he says, well, you're in your mid-50s now, let's, let's check your bloods, you know, see what your blood fats are like. And I thought, we free vegan, shouldn't be a problem. And, you know, but the results came back. Sure enough, my blood fats were going bad. And he gave me some papers, bits of paper that basically said, you know, eat more whole, whole foods, more whole grains, and less red meat. Now... What would you do if you'd been a vegetarian for 35 years, wheat-free vegan for 10 or more, and someone said that to you, that you've, you know, your blood fats have gone bad because you need to eat more whole food, more whole grain, and less red meat, and you hadn't eaten any of that. You had, that's what you'd been doing for the last 35 years. <laughs> and, you know, I'd already started thinking about diet because getting cancer, you know, and blepharitis and rosacea, you know, got me starting to think. But that was like the last straw, and that's when I really started to delve into the whole process that I'm going to share with you today. And um, over that time, you know, body fat was a, a constant struggle for me, and it feels like now I, I know exactly how to manage my body fat now in, in ways that, and with such a sense of empowerment that I never, ever had it. If I'd known now, and when I was 14, if I'd known what I know now when I was 14, life would have been so, so different. And that's what I'd like you to you know, think about for yourself.